What is going on guys, Virk Devoten here, and I'm going to start a new series called Tanking for ESO and Democracy. And what we're going to do is I'm going to try to allow uh, subject matter experts to articulate some of the finer points that, I, <laughs> according to my comment section, a lot of people just do not fucking understand. And it comes down to two things, whether it's willful ignorance, you know, via cognitive dissonance, because they're in a cult, or utter fucking stupidity. And I have to kind of lean towards the latter based on the comments that I've seen and the shit people have posted. So I'm gonna run with that and try to break this down to the lowest common denominator. Um, I don't expect that to change anyone's minds, but I think it's a good practice because if there are people in your life that you think are on the precipice of kind of understanding what is happening, uh, the threat to democracy, how Nazikins are together, like completely and 100% together in this effort to alter democracy. Well, it's not really a democracy in their eyes. They want it to be an, an oligarchy. And people like Trump want it to be a monarchy. The irony is completely lost on them. So let's, let's see if we can figure out a way to find those people whose you know, cult mentality is at least somewhat pierced, that there is a ray of hope, and that we can hopefully common sense and factual arguments to get through to them. Let's see what happens. Republicans have a three-part strategy to subvert the election this November, and we're going to tell you what it is. Welcome back to Democracy Docket. I'm Mark Elias. And I'm Paige Moskowitz. Let's get started. It has become very clear that the GOP has a three-part strategy to try to subvert elections this fall. We're going to walk you through exactly what it is, what they're doing, the lawsuits they're filing, the laws they've passed, the rules they're changing. So, Mark, let's break it down, starting with the first step to suppress voters. Right. So part one of their strategy is to make it harder for you to vote. They want to suppress people's vote. Why is this so important to them? This is important to them because they know that if every eligible voter were able to vote and cast their ballot, they would lose in a landslide. I mean, let's take a step back. They are they are not competing in November of 2024 to win the most votes. That is a common misconception that the media continues to uh, to uh, per perpetuate. The fact is they did not win the popular vote for president in 2020. Uh, Joe Biden won it by 7 million votes. They did not win the popular vote in 2016. Hillary Clinton won it by 3 million votes. They did not win the popular vote in 2012. They did not win the popular vote in 2008. They did win it uh, narrowly, George Bush, in his reelection in 2004. But they did not then win it in 2000 when Al Gore won the popular vote and lost the presidency. They did not win the popular vote in 1996. They did not win the popular vote in 1992. How far back would you like me to go, Paige? The fact is Republicans are not a majority party. They are a minority party who relies on things like the Electoral College, on things like the fact that big states only get two senators and small states get two senators that uh, they rely on gerrymandering, state legislative races and congressional races. In other words, they rely on the rules to maintain power, even though they don't have majority support. So what that means to us in the realm of voting is that they have to keep down those margins. They have to find increased ways to prevent people from voting, because if those numbers run up too high, then they can't get the advantage of the electoral college's natural bias against Democrats. They can't, they, they, may, uh, they may be overrun even with their gerrymandering, right? The gerrymanders may be broken by such high voter turnout. And we've seen this. We've seen this in recent elections. Democrats did much better in 2022 than people thought they would. Why? Because of high turnout. We've seen it in some of these special elections. Why? Because of high turnout. So, so the first part of the three-part plan is that Republicans 
are going to engage in voter suppression. They enacted a whole bunch of new laws in 2021. They enacted new laws in 2022, in 2023, in 2024, and they have been filing voter suppression lawsuits. Yes, those major laws we saw in states like Texas, Florida, Georgia, where they, you know, tightened who can vote by absentee ballot, who can return an absentee ballot, changing registration rules. We saw in Ohio and Montana changing uh, voter ID rules. So the long game of voter suppression has been going on for a while now. They've been changing election laws since 2020 to limit who can vote, make it harder to vote. We're also seeing with these lawsuits, they're filing challenging voter rules, trying to get states to purge voters. They are simply trying to limit the electorate. They're trying to limit who can vote, the ways they can vote, and whether or not their votes will ultimately be counted. That's right. And we've seen, that's why we have seen this huge influx of litigation by the Republican Party itself and Donald Trump, by the way, and Donald Trump's campaign. You know, we 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 didn't see that in 2020. Uh, but this election cycle, they have gotten desperate enough in some places. They've actually brought litigation, not just in the name of the Republican Party or a state party or a, a Republican affiliate, but in the name of the Trump campaign. And that's before you get to the web of right wing organizations that work, you know, in in close, you know, collaboration or or at least directionally for the same things um, in this well funded right wing, you know, web uh, that that file these lawsuits. All of this page is in service of the first of the three part strategy, which is trying to suppress the vote. So that's step one, to suppress voters. Step two is to challenge voters and intimidate election workers. Now, we've seen the voter challenges part for a while now. So, Mark, talk to us about election vigilantism, how Republicans are facilitating these mass voter challenges. Yeah, so I think of the three, this is the one that I think deserves much more attention than it's gotten. You know, people know that there's voter suppression. I think if you ask even, you know, the mainstream media, you ask a lot of Democrats or, or, or pro-democracy groups, they can rattle off a list of voter suppression techniques they, they, and, and states that have engaged them or laws like you, like Paige, you pointed out, the Texas law or the, or the, or the uh, Georgia law. But the one that I think is not getting the attention it deserves is this one, which is voter challenges and intimidation of election officials. And the voter challenges, as you said, we started to see this in earnest in the special elections at the end of the 2020 cycle. So we didn't really see a lot of voter challenges before the 2020 election. We actually saw it in the Georgia runoff elections in the Senate race in 2020, uh, uh, really that took place in January 2021, uh, where you started to see these groups of, of, of vote suppressors and election vigilantes compile lists of tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people in the end, who they had never met and they did not know. And they would submit these names to county or local election officials and ask that those people be removed from the rolls. So when we talk about a voter challenge, that's what we mean. It is someone in the community, not the state, not the county, it is someone in the community who gets your name and puts it on a spreadsheet and says, you shouldn't be allowed to vote. You, you should be removed from the voter rolls. If that sounds Orwellian, it is. And it's nuts that it's allowed, but it is not just allowed, it has grown. Georgia, in their voter suppression law in 2021, made it easier to challenge and harder to defeat challenges. And just earlier this year, they made it easier to challenge again. Uh, 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 and, and we are seeing litigation now by, uh, by uh, these folks trying to make challenging easier. So, so this notion that, that people should be able to remove other people from the rolls is something that is growing. It is a huge threat. It is not just in Georgia. We see these voter challenges in Nevada. We see these voter challenges in Texas. You know, lots of voter challenges in Texas. Competitive Senate race, by the way, in Texas, as well as, you know, uh, congr important congressional races in Texas. Nevada, presidential, Senate, and, and congressional races. So we're seeing this around the country and in other states as well, not just those. Uh, but this is going to be one of the big stories, I think, in the final two months of the election. And we're seeing these actions happen by the same group. So True the Vote, a right-wing organization based in Texas, challenged over a quarter of a million voter registrations in the runoff to the Georgia Senate races in January of 2021, like you said. True the Vote has also just submitted tens of thousands of voter challenges in the state of Texas. Now, the good news is there is that Texas has said, 
we're too close to an election. We have a process in place for voter challenges anyway. So election officials there are not worried about people getting off the rolls for this election because of True the Votes voter challenges, but it intimidates voters. It sows doubt into the elections process. It makes people hesitant and scared to go and actually cast their ballot because what if they show up and they're told your voter registration was challenged, you're not an eligible voter, or we need you to give us more information to prove you are who you say you are. So intimidation of voters also goes into the intimidation of election officials, which is the second part of step two. Mark, we have heard reports after reports of increased harassment and intimidation against election officials since the 2020 election. Yeah, so every time you read a story about election deniers getting into election offices, ask yourself the flip side. What happened to the good election officials who got out, right? And the fact is a lot of really good election officials are leaving the field. They were just deciding it's not worth. It's not worth the trouble. It's not worth the harassment. It's not worth being doxxed. And, and so we are facing a problem, not just of the bad apples getting into the bunch, but the good apples getting out. And that is a really big problem. And it is not accidental. It is not happening by chance. It is happening because this is part of a strategy by the right wing and the Republican Party to make it easier to harass election officials. The Republican Party and their allies have brought litigation in several states claiming a First Amendment right to harass election workers. You heard that right. You can look it up on Democracy Docket. Go to democracydocket.com and you can, you can find it there or even better yet, subscribe to its free daily and weekly newsletters. The link is in the show notes and you will get updates on these lawsuits, okay? That Republic. So I'm gonna interject there real quick to say this is something that, again, suppressing people's ability to vote via voter rolls, via these baseless lawsuits, and I say baseless because once they're brought before a judge, they have no evidence to support purging these voter rolls. Now, if they have like a majority in a local state, like Congress and governorship, um, they can just do this anyway and you'll see states will do this and they'll do so typically within six months of an election to throw people off and it could be something as say like two signatures of yours didn't match up on a ballot and say your driver's license right my signature never looks the same there are always variations in a person's signature always even those that look identical there are variations in there sometimes small sometimes large a lot of times like uh for all the documents that i have to sign for my career i initial i don't actually sign my entire name and i got so used to that that my signature now has actually changed like completely from what it was like even five years ago that doesn't mean someone is trying to, you know, steal my vote, right? But Nazi cons will use that and use that as an excuse to take you off a voter roll. Um, they say, we want, you know, uh, let's say you don't have a driver's license, right? Let's say you don't drive. Let's say you can't drive because you have certain eye issues. Let's say you don't need to drive, right? I didn't need to drive when I lived in Chicago for 17 years. I didn't even own a car. It, it wasn't necessary. It was such a um, ridiculous expense. Didn't need, now I had a state ID, but some people won't take that for some reason. They are using anything. If you, you need a driver's license, they use that word specific in these lawsuits because the state ID or even a student ID is not enough in their eyes. Now people will sit here and try to counter this and say like, well, you know, you need to have some ID in order to vote. We already have that. You are assigned a federal ID at birth. It's called the fucking social security number. You need your social security number to register to vote. Every single time that I voted in three different states, right, from where I've lived, I didn't vote in three different states at one election. I bet you anything someone's gonna try and take that out of context, but regardless, the first thing they ask me to confirm is my social security number. That is your fucking federal ID. If somebody uses your social security number before or after your vote, guess what? A flag is sent up and that vote is challenged. 
as they said, even in Republican states, we have ways of, we already have these safeguards. All this other sort of flooding the zone with shit of, you know, oh, no one knows who's voting and illegals are vote. Well, okay. Let's say immigrants are coming in and they get a temporary social security number because they are a documented worker, right? You can't vote with a temporary social security number. This isn't like the 1970s where we're using DOS shell prompt uh, programs to verify social security numbers, right? The people who think this, again, this is where I go to the latter of my examples where they're just being that fucking stupid and in their argument and their logic, it doesn't pan out. Anyway, I just say I wanted to go on that little rant. Let's go ahead and continue on with the show. Republicans and their conservative allies are bringing in order to enable them to harass and intimidate election officials. It is a big, big problem. And again, it is the second of the three part strategy that Republicans have for this fall. And the third part of this strategy, Mark, we've talked about it a lot recently, is a goal of refusing or delaying certification. Yeah, and we have talked a lot about this, and many of our viewers have written in about this, how concerned they are in what they read uh, about. Just a little highlight, Trump has not gone to court yet for the multiple lawsuits against him and others in the fake electoral scheme of 2020. You want to know why? Because those fake electors, I think it's something like 60% of them have flipped and are now working with the FBI, giving testimony and evidence to make the case stronger. Because that motherfucker is going to prison. The certification process, you know, when on, on, uh, on TV, on election night, when you see that a race has been called by a certain, uh, for a certain state, um, or, or for a certain race, uh, what they're talking about is the unofficial results. These are the results that are coming in from the precincts. Well, ultimately, those precinct results have to be totaled up and reconciled by local election officials. Oftentimes, they're called canvassing boards. And these are usually non-controversial events. They are usually quite celebratory, where everyone on, you know, celebrates a job well done. They are usually bipartisan boards. And what we are seeing is that these boards are being weaponized by Republicans. They are replacing reasonable Republicans, and they are putting on these boards election deniers whose stated mission is not to certify the accurate results of elections, either refusing to certify at all, insisting on uh, frivolous investigations, or potentially even certifying inaccurate results. You have... Again, I'm going to pop in here. If you think that this is some conspiracy theory, since 2020, look at the interviews of people who are already in the Nazikin party or who are running to be in the Nazikin party, who have refused to say when point blank asked by reporters, will you certify an election, right? They won't, they'll say like, I'll only do it if it's fair right or only if basically trump wins when they say and they try to divert that if it was only fair that is so ambiguous for them to say well i didn't agree or there's some question in my mind about one of the swing states so i'm not going to do it the problem with simple math for nazikins is that they they don't understand it uh, one plus one equals negative three to them, unless they're Trump voters where one plus one equals 20. Now, for the rest of us who understand remedial math, um, that's not how it works, but I think this is a core functional issue of Nazikins and most, more the supporters than anything else, because ironically, as much as the right wants to claim that uh, higher education is bad and that it is being driven by liberals, almost every single candidate has gone to an Ivy League school in the Nazican party, sometimes two. Ted Cruz, Tom Cotton, Chump, uh, JD Couch fucking Vance, they've all gone to Ivy League schools. It, this, 
how, again, I, I have to attribute it to a cult mentality who sit there and say that all these institutions are somehow owned by the liberals and yet the people they vote for attended them. 99.99% Bovert, Marjorie, Taylor, Green being obviously the exceptions. I think that's pretty apparent. Um, it just it just blows my mind that this sort of delusion is so easy to use for Nazi uh, Republicans and to enrapture their base with it for so long. This attack on higher education, again, started in the late 70s and there was an inflection point specifically with Reagan who started basically defunding um, higher education via federal grants. And that's where you start to see this explosion of, you know, people like, oh, I worked in the 70s and I got my college degree and I only had a part-time job. Yeah, because your college degree only cost $10,000 for four years. Now it's forty, forty-five thousand dollars plus a year. Uh, again, more Ivy League schools, but I digress. I'll keep going. Even this come to a head in Georgia specifically, where uh, uh, the state election board, uh, MAGA controlled, have been passing rules that will set the set the playing field for this to happen in Georgia. But it's not just Georgia. You know, my law firm had to sue Cochise County, Arizona in 2022 over this. We had to sue a county in Pennsylvania over this in 2022. And of course, going all the way back page to 2020, we saw Donald Trump and Ronna McDaniel try to get the Wayne County uh, canvassing board, it, this county that covers Detroit, to not certify the election results there. And this is going to be a major battlefield in the post-election uh, in this election. Mark, that's their three-part strategy, suppress voters, challenge voters, intimidate election officials and refuse to certify the results. What's being done to fight back? Look, so this is an all hands on deck thing. You know, um, the lawyers, you know, my law firm, we are in court, other lawyers are in court around the country to fight voter suppression, to um, uh, prevent uh, and deal with these challenges and intimidation and to fight against rules that will allow for, against certification. But it's not just up to lawyers, you know, and, and the lawyers will be ready after the election as well. But it's not just up to the lawyers, you know, this is up to every one of us to call this out, to not normalize this, not accept that this is a reasonable strategy for the Republican Party to have em embraced. It is not reasonable that the Republican Party has openly embraced voter suppression. It is not acceptable that the Republican Party is litigating to harass election officials. And it is beyond the pale. It is so out of bounds as to be uh, as to be extraordinary that they are enabling and encouraging uh, people to refuse to acknowledge the results of elections by certifying on time accurate election results. But this is where we are. So I need everyone who is watching this to do their part. I need you, number one, to make sure you are registered to vote, that you have a plan to vote. Uh, that you confirm those details that you're registered, that you haven't been purged, you haven't been kicked off the rolls, you haven't been subject to a challenge that's removed you, that you have a plan to vote, you, that if there's been voter suppression in your community, you know what the rules are now, and that you vote and that you make sure your friends and your family are as well. But I also need you to speak out. I need you to speak out that it is not okay to suppress people's rights to vote. I need you to speak out that it is not okay to harass election officials. I need you to speak out that you expect that your that your vote is gonna be accurately uh, counted and that it's gonna be part of an accurately certified election results. And we need to make this a front burner issue in this election. We need to make this a front burner issue for the media. We need to make this a front burner issue for, um, uh, for activists because the Republicans count on you being cynical and discouraged. They count on you saying there's no point in voting because it won't matter anyway. They count on them being able to do these tricks in quiet, in the darkness where no one is paying attention. And I promise you, if we all do that, the lawyers will do their part. The campaigns will do their part. They will be ready to defend your right to vote. They are already defending your right to vote in court, and they will do that in the post-election as well. But we all, in the next two months, need to band together against the Republicans' cynical three-part strategy of suppressing the vote, challenging voters and intimidating election officials, and refusing to certify elections. So if you don't know who Mark Elias is, this guy is like, 
he's kind of the Superman of uh, suing and defending uh, democracy, suing Nazikins in their efforts. He has been doing this pretty much his whole career, but in the last... I'm gonna, I could be wrong, but I wanna say the last 10 years, he has been specifically focused on these sort of bullshit laws, uh, voter suppression and uh, denialism. And I think he was actually just brought on by the Harris Walls uh, team to be like a, uh, I'm getting distracted here, hold on. Oh, no, nope, see, I did it. Uh, I think he's, brought on to be like their head of council specifically for challenging what is sure to come as a you know bullshit election denialism in 2024 i have no doubt of that and i'm going to get stuck here i should not have started talking while i was fighting a boss i'm relearning how to tank all right so that is going to be our video today um and just actually one last food for thought when it comes to election denialism purging voter rolls voter intimidation um intimidating election workers <laughs> just, just think about that for a second right like if there was movie about that the people doing that would be the bad guys, right? They're not the good guys. People banning books are not the good guys. People, you know, harassing election officials are not the good guys. Like this isn't, this isn't rocket science, right? This is pure, just baseline logic. And yet people somehow think, or maybe, I don't know, you know what? Maybe, maybe they understand that this isn't, um, that this is bad and that this puts people at a disadvantage because there are a lot of people, you know, not skin party who are racist and who do understand that uh, America is, or at least moving towards a egalitarian multi-racial uh, country. And they hate it. They're scared of it. They're terrified of it. They, you know, they think people are gonna going to eat their cats and dogs, which is ironic, coming from probably majority of meat eaters. Um, but I digress. So I'm going to kind of leave it off of there and just just think about it for a second. People who deny election results, people who have to do shady shit in general. Um, it, how are they perceived as the good guys? Like it just it just isn't there. The logic just doesn't pan out. But again, maybe that's, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. I guess we'll find out.